right, so I got another video for you today. Apologies about the low light. It's about 5.40 a.m. My original plan today, on a Saturday, was to go to Spring Creek in State College and exclusively fly fish for some wild brown trout. It's one of the best fisheries uh, for wild brown trout in the entire state. However, um, a pre-planned Zoom conference call with the priest presiding over my wedding in two months at a cathedral, um, the time got moved up. So at approximately 10 a.m. this morning, uh, I do have a call at home on my laptop with my fiance and a priest. So instead of going an hour and a half from where I live to Spring Creek, we're gonna be diverted. We're gonna be diverted to um, another stream I fished once before. I fly fished that I caught, I exclusively fly fished that I caught two little dinky brown trout, didn't make a video from it. Um, and the stream I'm talking about, I'm gonna try saying it once. It's the Kishikakwilis, Kishikakwilis, something like that. Anyways, everybody, everybody calls it the Kish because it's really difficult to pronounce. So we're gonna be fishing this section of the Kish um, right below two limestone Spring Creek infusions. Uh, I think it's T and Honey Creeks, both Class A wild brown trout streams in their own right. Um, so the Kish uh, is stocked, but it's also Class A where we're gonna be. Um, I'm gonna start with my spinning rod. We only have a couple hours, two hours really, before I have to leave. Um, if I have time, I may fly fish one of the tributaries. Again, very tentative. We'll kind of see how it goes. So I just found some parking. You can see the sun is just, just starting to kiss over the horizon. Um, <clears throat> the temperature gauge in my car said it was like 62 degrees, which is so, so nice. It is so pleasant to be out when it's this cool. Um, like I said, the last couple days uh, have been more in like the low 80s. Um, we've got a little bit of rain, not a lot of rain, but at least a little bit. Um, so I think the Kish is still gonna be on the lower side, uh, but there should be a, a little bit more water than there has been recently. Um, so yeah, last time I was here, the only other time I was here when I fly fished, I um, I didn't fish this section, so not really sure <clears throat> what we have in store here, but it looks, you know, it looks pretty good. Ooh, dang, just had my first trout, little brownie, little wild brownie. He definitely popped off though. So let's see if there's anything else lurking in here. Definitely popped off, dang it. Dang, dang, dang. From what I read, this is kind of like an overlooked trout stream insofar as like most people in this area go to, you know, Spring Spring Creek and State College like I was going to or, you know, they'll go to some of the more well-known places. So this kind of goes underfished in some ways. I'm continuing to work my way up the Kish. Um, looks like I'm sort of getting away from the town now and getting closer to some of the more not necessarily remote, but slightly more um, scenic areas of this section of the stream. So, yeah, it definitely looks like it opens up down there. So I'm getting to some slightly deeper water up here. Not a lot deeper, but a little bit deeper. Um, let me get right up on this rock right here. Definitely had some bites so far, some little brownies. Ah. Oh. Wouldn't be surprised if there was some smallmouth in here, too, honestly. Definitely would not be surprised. Oh, got him. Got him. Nice one. Nice one. Oh, nice one. What is that? What do we got here? Oh, that's a rainbow. That's a nice rainbow. Don't get off the barbless hooks. Oh, got him. Got him. Nice rainbow. Nice rainbow. Let's get the hook at him and take a look at him. Awesome. This is a nice looking holdover rainbow. Probably about 12, 13 inches. Reviving him in the net. Got the barbless hook right out of him. So let's get this nice, let's get this nice rainbow right out of here. Real awesome. Woo. Yeah, that's a good fish. Got him right out of here. Look at him. He's just swimming away. Just swimming away. So I'm just continuing to work my way upstream. Really wish I had eaten breakfast. I did not eat breakfast today. Usually 
on my way to go fish wherever I'm going. I always eat like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or granola bar or something. I didn't eat anything. I'm feeling real diabetes -y right now. Not that I have diabetes, but I feel that pain. I feel like real, my blood sugar feels like obnoxiously low. So just bear with me. Just freaking bear with me. Ooh, this is a nice stretch right here. Real nice stretch. Great cast. That's, oh my gosh, monster, oh my God. Dude, this is huge, holy shit. Dude, if, the, if I land this, oh my God, dude, this is one of the biggest trout I've like ever caught in my life. Dude, what the hell is this? You feel this drag? Dude, what the fuck? Oh my God, oh, don't lose him, don't lose him. Oh, dude, I hope I don't lose this guy. Jeez. Oh, don't lose him, don't lose him. Oh no. Dude, I really hope I don't lose this guy. This is easily one of the biggest trout I've ever caught. Oh, let's get him in, let's get him in. He's just hooked in the corner of the mouth. Got him. Oh my God, holy crap. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, monster, monster, monster. Got him, we got him, holy shit, dude. This is a monster, monster brownie. Look at the head on this guy, wow. We're gonna get him right out of here. We're just reviving him in the net. Like I said, this is easily one of the biggest browns I've ever caught in my life. He's right, he's right in the net here. Holy freaking crap, dude. All right, we're gonna get him out of here. We're gonna get him out of here. He's really chomping at the bit. This guy could like bite my hand off. Oh, he's almost too big to like hold. Wow. He's gone, look at him. Look at him, he's gone. He's freaking gone, wow, monster. All right, so I'm continuing to work my way up. I'm a little bit past the hole where I caught the big wild brown town. So I think there should now start to be other fish. I really think that fish controlled that entire area. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's maybe some bigger ones than that in this creek, but my assumption is he's, he's one of the biggest bruisers out here. Um, I don't really know as much about ages of trout as I should but you know I would say that was a five at least a five-year-old brown trout um, and they can live to you know seven eight nine years under the perfect conditions whereas brookies only live like three to five years I think uh, much lower gro growth rates um, yeah that was real awesome real sick all right so the hole we got that big wild brownie in probably about 50 yards down there. We fished all these stretches up here. Not even a bite, so I really truly believe that that brownie held some pretty serious territory. Um, so, but I'm hoping now we're, ooh, got him, got him. What is that? I think that's a, that's a little bow. That's a little bobo. Ooh, got him. That's just a little bow, so. Oh, look at that, barbless hook, popped right out. People don't believe me. Huh, nice little bow. I think they maybe put fingerlings in here because this isn't even like stalker size. Um, but we're gonna get them right out of here. It's uh, it's summer, so we're gonna get them, we're gonna get you right out of here, bud. Nice little bow, right back in the water. That's an ethical release right there. This really neat boulder strewn, boulder strewn, uh, sort of rapid, fast moving water area. Missed a couple trout. Oh god, terrible cast. Missed a couple trout already. Um, damn it. Missed a couple trout already, as I was saying. Listen to that. Dude, I don't even think I don't think that's a bird. I think that's an American mink. I can't see him, but I've heard American mink children, like babies, screech before. I kept thinking it was like a bird screeching. But that actually sounds to me, oh, I just got the chills, dude. I think there's an American mink, mink, American mink, a small weasel den right over here. All right, so you won't be able to see him, but I can see a little furry creature, a little American mink running around right behind those boulders. If you see, there's like all this brush pushed up into that crag and there's like little, oh, there's little American minks running all over the place. Oh, I can see him. 
Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Yeah, I'm sorry, you won't be able to see it, but there's two American mink babies, literally like plant roughhousing. Wow, that is pretty cool. All right, so we just heard and saw very briefly some American mink babies. So that means the mother presumably is out hunting right now. So that mom is after the same trout that we're after. Um, my end point is literally, oh, wow, I almost took an L. My end point is literally that bridge right up there. So we're gonna hit like one, two, three, maybe four little holes. And then we're gonna hop back up on the road, get to my car. And depending on what time it is when we get to my car, we may go try to fly fish a tributary. I'm not 100% sure yet. All right, so I just hiked back to my car. It took a little bit longer than I thought. I, I went like a good two miles up from where I started. Anyways, so headed to one of the tributaries. I don't know if it's honey or tea, but I'm gonna head to one of these limestone tributaries. And honestly, I have 30 minutes, maybe 25 minutes max to fish. So if I could catch literally one wild brownie, whatever size, I would be really happy to end the day or end the morning. Um, it's about 8:10, so it's not too hot yet. It's about 74 degrees. So let's quick go fly fish very briefly, hopefully catch one fish and call it a freaking day. So I just got to a little park um, behind me. Access around here is tricky. It seemed like there was a lot of commercial and private property. Um, I think I'm on Honey Creek. Yeah, I think I'm on Honey. This is definitely a limestone spring creek. I'm really only gonna fish this little stretch right here. And like I said, my goal is to catch one fish. Right now I have on a, just like a dry fly. I don't even really know what it is, um, but just a little dry fly. Up there, if I can see around that corner correctly, um, looks like there's some deeper water, so I might eventually put on like a little uh, a little nymph, like a little pheasant tail or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna work this dry fly briefly. I can't believe it. I just saw a little wild brownie go completely airborne. He was like, was literally like six inches out of the water. Um, I already got a bite on my fly, but I missed him because I suck. So before I potentially switch to a wet fly, let me let me plop this guy out there. Oh, great cast. Wow. Right there. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Nice one. Nice one. Nice one. Got him. Got him. That's a nice brown. Got him. Got him. Wow. Awesome. Freaking awesome. Yeah, we just got this beautiful eight or nine inch brownie on the freaking dry fly. I can't I can't believe it. So let me get the hook at him, we'll get him right out of here. Got him on the freaking dry fly. That's my that's my fly rod right there, so. Just got this beautiful, probably nine inch wild brownie. That is an absolute gorgeous. Look at the, oh, look at the beautiful, beautiful reds on this guy. We're gonna get him right out of here. He's, he's chomping at the bit. Beautiful, beautiful reds. Boom, boom, boom. We're gonna get him right out of here. That's a solid, easy nine inch fish on the dry. And he's, he's out of here. He's freaking out of here. Beautiful, beautiful. Watch my channel with any regularity. You know I've been very slowly learning how to fly fish. You know, catching one or two here, one or two there. For dry fly fishing, normally I just, I, I use like, you know, pheasant tails, prince nymph, zebra midge. I use, you know, stuff like that. That was, that was one of the bigger fish I've ever caught on a dry fly. Um, it's just like a little blackish looking dry fly and that freaking nine inch brownie hit it. So that's really all we wanted to do. I'm gonna very quickly, cause I literally just caught that. I'm gonna very quickly fish this pool with the same fly, see if I can catch anything else. But if I don't, we're out of here. That was so cool. All right, so I tried a couple more little stretches with my dry fly, had some bites, missed them. But that's A-OK. -okay. So as I get up into this uh, park, we're gonna quick wrap it up. So this morning, not even nine o'clock yet, this morning we fished the Kisha Quillis or whatever it is, the Kish. Um, we managed to get two stocked rainbows, nice holdovers, 
and that gorgeous 20 inch extra plump extra thick wild brownie because i don't think they stock browns and then here on one of the tribs we managed to catch a nice like nine inch wild brownie on the fly rod specifically dry fly fishing which i'm not very good at yet so excellent morning not a lot of trout but good quality trout so i think that's all we got for today as always thank you for watching i'm talking softly because there's people behind me and hopefully we'll catch some more fish next time